Hello everyone and welcome to Bevan's Bricks. I'm Daryl and in today's video we're going to be taking a very close in-depth look at a sequencer I recently purchased so I could make working traffic signals throughout my entire Lego city. The reason that I'm doing that is because I posted a very short video on my TikTok and I cannot believe the popularity of it as it already has over 45,000 views on that video. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to take a very close look here because in TikTok you can only post 60 second videos, or at least I can anyway. And here I can actually explain and show everything that this sequencer is actually capable of doing. Anyway, if this is something that interests you, stick around because it's coming up. Jumping right into things, I want to start by showing you the actual board itself. This board I actually purchased from Amazon. Uh, it's made by Gallic Electronics. And I will be putting a link for this board, if this is something that you're interested in, in the description of this video below. Anyway, to quickly kind of discuss uh, how this actually works, what you have is this is where you put your input voltage. You can, uh, this actually works anywhere from... 8 to 24 volts, if I remember correctly, or 8 to 20 volts, excuse me. I'm actually using it with a 9-volt power supply. And what I actually have, and I will be putting a link in the description of this video as well for this, this is a variable voltage power supply. This voltage or power supply will give me power anywhere from 3 up to 12 volts. So, uh, And I already had resistors for operating at 9 volts to get my LEDs anyway to operate at 9 volts. So that's why I'm operating the voltage of this system with a 9 volt system. But anyway, again, I will have a link in the description of this video for that power supply and for both this controller as well. The other thing I do want to point out is how this actually works, is you have a common on both sides. The common is actually your positive DC voltage. And then the other three, which is your green, yellow, and red, for your lights is the negative. So when you actually wire this up, you put your resistor in the common up here, and then you just wire your wires directly to this portion of it to give your lights their working capabilities. Now you also have two buttons here. This button is to cycle it through the five different programmable um, settings that it already has in regards to because this is capable of doing five different things. You can have a traffic light for a four-way intersection. You can have it for USA or UK. You can also have a traffic light that's set up to control a train. So when it goes red, the train lights will flash back and forth. It'll also do uh, a traffic light with a walkway or a walk crosswalk signs and the last setting is just for like a standard four-way where it's letting traffic go one way and it's stopping on the other so there's already five pre-programmed settings in there and then you can also cycle this for the length of time that you want the yellow to remain on and you can also do a duration for the sequence for the time that it goes through i'm not going to do every one of these settings throughout the video i'm just trying to let everybody know what's available but anyway with the uh the timing what it is is you can speed up how quickly it goes from green yellow to red and then how slow it down from how slow it can go from green yellow to red but anyway let's plug this guy in and see all the awesome things it's capable of i already have the power supply set to nine volts so all i'm going to do is plug in my my little adapter I have right here in the first setting when you first plug this guy on and let me turn the lights off so the color of the lights stand out a little better that might even be too much light but anyway the way that I currently have it set up this would be a United States traffic signal four-way stop so as you can see for the United States when you have green it's red on the opposing traffic then it'll go yellow then red and then this will go back to green like you see right there. Again, this is how a four-way stop works in the United States. Now, if you are in the UK, Europe, Germany, wherever you want to talk about, let's hit the setting so we can change it. So just push it once. And now this is going to act and function as a four-way stop in the UK. With the UK, this light stays red and then the yellow comes on. And then the green goes on and then you have the red. Now when the yellow goes here, you'll see the yellows here as well and then it'll finish cycling through. So right there is two awesome functions, whether you're in the United States 
or you're in the UK or Europe, um, you have two different ways that you can control and actually make your lights work in your Lego city. And how awesome is that? Now let's go to the third setting. This third setting, and again, all you do is every time I'm adjusting the settings, I am strictly just clicking the button once and letting go. The third setting is what I was telling you where if you have one lane of traffic, you want to just be able to run through without stopping. And then the other lane of traffic uh, just has to stop and then look both ways and then go, well, that's what that particular setting is for. And I was trying to get that to where it's more level looking. Anyway, so that's that one. So now let's click the button one more time. And after it flashes, it'll start functioning again. Now, this particular setting, if I remember correctly, this should be the train one. So once this goes red, these will start flashing. And there we go. Now, if you are actually doing this for an actual train crossing, where this is your traffic light and this is for the train crossing, obviously the light that's lighting up in green, you would want red as well. But because I'm my main focus is having this as a traffic signal, I wanted to show it what it looked like as a traffic signal. But again, when this actually functions, so that's going to go red, and then this will start flashing like a train is going across. So that'll flash until the train goes through the actual railroad crossing. And then once the uh, train is actually through and the railroad crossing stops, this is going to go back to green to allow traffic to actually cross and go through that particular intersection. And I'm going to let it finish. And there you go. Now here, this last setting is if you wanted to set it up with your light pole like this with a working crosswalk. So right now, traffic is telling you to stop. So now this traffic is going green. So the people walking could actually go green. And then this would be the flashing red to tell you that you need to hurry up, that the signal's about to change. So it's telling you to get off and hurry up and get off the intersection for the people that are walking. And then once it finishes doing that, because this is the traffic signal, now it's telling you don't walk, so now it's red. And then they both stay red. Again, the one that's hanging right now is the actual crosswalk. And this one on my left, this guy right here, is the actual traffic signal. So the green light, again, now it's telling them to slow down or hurry up and get across the road because it's about to be no more walking. Then it's going to go solid red, which tells them you can't walk. And then the light will cycle back over to red. See, right now it's telling them that they can't walk anymore. And now it's a red light, so the pedestrians cannot cross. Now, the thing that I do want to point out for this particular setting, if you're wanting to do a four-way stop, you're going to require two of these boards in, or actually in order to be able to do the crosswalk with the traffic light feature. So that's going to cause a few hang-ups, but not too many. It's just you're going to have to have more electronic parts. But still, I thought this was an amazing product um, because there's no real, any, there's nothing complicated about it. It's really straightforward and easy. And then all I've actually done, as I'm hoping you can see here, is all I did is on these little screwed ports, I just take and screw in my pre-made plugs, of which you can also buy these on Amazon. And I'll put a link in the description below for those as well. So all you do is you just strip them, you pop it in, you tire the screw down, tighten the screw down, and you are all set to go. That way you can buy your lights, which I like to buy from Brick Loot. Uh, the lights I'm actually using in this video are brick, blinky bricks anyway. Uh, but what's really cool is I was talking to Brick Loot, and uh, they are actually going to start manufacturing lights that you can use in this really awesome setup as well. And once I get those, I will do a more in-depth video and show you how to do everything. But uh, this is just a test to show you how you could do traffic signals or how you could do um, set up your signals and such. But just to show you the way that I did it, this piece, I actually wanted it to be able to be flapping because that's how it would actually be on an actual road. But the only places you can see the wire is this little place right here where it comes down and it goes back in the pole. And then the wire comes out here and then it's going to my actual traffic signals. And I think this is going to make an absolutely amazing looking traffic signal in my city. Now, when I put this in my city, I'm going to be making the traffic signal arms all black. And that's why I have the black piece there as well. 
because by me, everything that they're installing here lately is a black traffic signal pole arm. And I was trying to be consistent with the modern looking uh, traffic signal poles is why I'm going to be doing that. But you can expect to see a whole bunch of these installed in my city, hopefully very soon, once I get all the custom lighting that Brick Loot is manufacturing for me. And I will make a video showing you guys those particular products as well. And I will also make a video just to let you guys know when they are available, as I know a lot of people probably want to be able to get those and see what they have. Anyway, though, I hope that that was a very in-depth video and it explains a lot of things for a lot of people because I have been getting a ton of questions about this little guy. And again, I do want to remind everybody that I will be putting a link for this sequencer below in the description of this video for the power supply I'm using and also for these little plugs I'm using here as well to make your lighting projects extremely easy. And anyway, that's all for this video. So anyway, as always, thank you for coming to Bevan's Bricks. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share below. And hopefully we'll see you next time on Bevan's Bricks.